Hello everybody and welcome to Sin City Living. My name is Jason. I'll be bringing you today's episode. As always, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and our usual shout out to our patrons. We appreciate all the tips and support. We're hoping to use it to add more games to the channel. If you're curious about it, go ahead and check the description of the video down below. And just as a reminder, we are releasing every week videos exclusive to our patrons. So I hope you guys enjoyed last week's videos and I hope you guys enjoy this week's videos. If you have any suggestions or comments, please just comment to us or email us on that site. And if you have any uh, strategies or anything you would like us to film, please email us at sincitylivinglv at gmail.com and we'd be happy to shoot a video on it or just respond to your email. I respond to quite a few emails. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it for today. So what are we covering for today? For today, what I want to cover is I want to cover buy bets, but not buy bets on the 4 and 10. We've done those before and most players know that, they, that uh, the 4 and 10 becomes an automatic buy at 20, 25, 10, regardless of, you know, depending on the casino uh, is whether it's a buy at 25, 20, or 10, or other, other areas. Um, I want to cover the 5 and 9. When does it make sense to do a buy bet on the 5 and 9? And should we do a buy bet on the 5 and 9? Well, let's look at the payouts, and we're just going to use the nine for this because they're identical, so there's no need to do them both. Um, so let's look at these. Now, we'll, we'll say $10 minimum bet because it's extremely difficult to find anything higher than that. We'll do them from 10 all the way up to $45, and we'll take a look. But we'll just discuss the payouts. I'm not going to sit here and cut this out uh, every single payout. So we'll discuss the payouts. So these are all set up as place bets, OK? Now, how do they pay? Well, a $10 place bet on the 9 will pay $14. Now, if it were a buy, what would it pay? It would actually pay $14. It would pay his odds, 15, minus the VIG, which would be a dollar. It's a dollar for every 20 or less. So this it would pay 14 both as a place bet and as a buy bet. So kind of a wash. What about 15? Well, this pays $21 as a place bet. As a buy bet, it would pay, well, $21. $21.50 technically, but the casino will keep the 50 cents. So again, no need. No need for that. $20. As a place bet, this pays $28. As a buy bet, this pays... $29, pay $30 as odds, minus a dollar big. So, right here, we already hit a point where a buy bet would actually pay you more. There'll be a caveat that I'm going to cover after I go through all of these numbers, though. But, at this point, in theory, this pays you more. So now let's look at the 25. Well, 25 as a place bet is going to pay you $35. Now, if it were a buy bet, what would it pay? Well, here's where you get kind of interesting, too. The odds would pay 37.50, so 37. What are they charging as a VIG? On the 4 and 10, most casinos are going to do a courtesy bet of $1 VIG on a $25 buy. But the 4 and 10 are automatic buys as well. They just immediately become a buy at a certain point. So if it were a dollar VIG, then this would pay 36 versus the 35 it pays as a place bet. But technically, since it's above $20, technically the VIG is 2 bucks, and some casinos may charge you 2 bucks for that. In which case, now it pays the exact same as a place bet. So we're going to say that this is kind of iffy on whether or not it makes sense at this point. So now let's go to $30. Well, $30 as a place bet is going to pay you $42. This definitely would have a $2 big as a buy bet. So what would it pay as a buy? $43. So it is absolutely better, but only by a buck. Only by a buck. 42 versus 43. So we haven't hit any huge, huge, huge differences. So the caveat that I'm going to explain to you in a moment can still come into play with all of these buy bets at this point. So now we go over to 35. So 35 pays $49 as a place bet. What does it pay as 
a buy bet? Well, as a buy bet, now it gets it, it gets kind of interesting. It pays 49 as a place bet. It's a buy bet. It pays it would pay 52 minus a two dollar vig. So again, it's only a dollar difference. So technically, it's still there, but it's a dollar difference. So the caveat is still going to apply. What about 40 bucks? Well, 40 bucks as a place bet is going to pay you $56. As a buy bet, it's going to pay you $58, 60 minus the two big. So for sure now, this is, this is uh, becoming more advantageous because that's a $2 difference, two bucks. So from here up, it becomes definitely advantageous to do do the buy bet. Doesn't mean you should. After I go over the caveat, I'm going to explain um, very briefly why you may or may not want to do these. But so, what is this caveat that I'm talking about? Well, this can also apply, by the way, to the four and ten. Except the four and ten, once you get to a certain point, you don't have a choice on the buy. It's just it's an automatic buy at the casinos, so they're going to force you to go into the buy, regardless of whether or not you would want to. And on the four and ten, it makes zero sense not to do the buy. So there, there would never be a point where you didn't want to. So, but for these, it's going to depend on the casino and how they do their VIG. And I'm not talking just about whether or not the $25 is a courtesy buy or not. I'm actually talking about whether or not they take the VIG up front or afterwards. Most casinos do take it afterwards. So they basically take it out of the payout. No big deal. Um, that's, how, that's how we treat the 4 and 10. For the most part, there are some that don't. Um, but there are still casinos out there that take the VIG up front. Now taking the VIG up front is where with these, these iffy ones where it's only a dollar difference between the buy and the place bet, I would definitely not be a fan of, of doing the buy. Um, I wouldn't be a fan of doing a buy on a 4 and 10 either if, if they took the VIG up front even though it, it still does, does make sense. And this is why the casino is trying to get a, an additional house edge because they're going to take the VIG up front in the hope that it never actually rolls into seven outcomes. They basically made an extra dollar off of you in profit by having you pay the VIG or extra two dollars, whatever the VIG may be. They've made that VIG off of you in profit because you never actually got paid on the bet. So you paid a VIG just for the ability to maybe get paid on your bet. It's, they're, they're basically, in a way, charging you an extra VIG. It's just an extra tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of house edge, a tiny little bit of profit that's still still going to the casinos. So I personally, if I'm at a casino where they charge the big up front, I am almost definitely not going to play dice and I'm probably not going to play any of their other table games either because if they are trying to eke out and squeeze out every little bit of juice from the, from the players, then something tells me that they have little tweaks to their blackjack and other stuff to increase their house edge. Maybe they just pay six to five or whatever it may be, but they're, they're likely to have other ways to increase their house edge as well. If they're really, really, really trying to to squeeze the, the players. The odds are against the players to begin with. I understand that when I play, I'm more likely to lose than to win. I'm playing for fun, um, but I don't wanna just get absolutely annihilated because there's even additional house edges involved in it. So, so that, that is one of the issues with, with the buy, the VIG up front versus the VIG, uh, VIG behind. Now, should you do a buy on the five and nine? I'm going to say that it's entirely up to you. I will say that dealers do not do buys on the five and nine, uh, but there's a couple reasons for that. One, to be honest, most dealers haven't thought about it because it doesn't come up very, very often. I think in the last three years, I've seen a buy bet on the five or nine once. Once in the last three years, and that one time was about two and a half years ago. Um, outside of that, I've never, uh, I haven't, I haven't seen it in in recent memory. I don't remember the last time, other than that one time. Um, so it doesn't come up that often, which goes into the other reason why it it may or may not be a good idea to do. If you if you decide that you want to do a buy bet on the five and nine, the very first time you do it, you're likely to grind the game to an absolute dead stop. Um, and obviously you're already in the middle of a roll. You've already got a point marked if you're looking at place bets and buy bets. And you're going to bring the game to, an, to a dead stop. They're going to stop the dice 
because they're going to have to discuss it. Because again, it is so incredibly rare that you'd be surprised how many dealers have forgotten that it's even possible. Especially if you're at a break-in house. If you're at a break-in casino, a tier two or below casino, there's a, a high probability that, that you're going to get met with a blank look. And, or even told you can't do that. And of course you can, in which case then you have to appeal to the box, to the, to the suit, who better let you do it. But again, you've got that discussion. And even the suit may, if you're at a break-in house, you may even have a break-in suit. You may have a, a supervisor that hasn't been in suit for very long. So they're going to be staring at it going, um, uh, uh, and thinking about it. And then they got to think about the VIGs, up front, behind. Uh, do they just slap a buy button on it? Or do they actually pull it inside them? number there's going to be some discussion it's going to be an absolute dead stop for probably one to three minutes while they figure it out so that's that's the the traction to doing a buy on the five and nine however once you've done it once and you keep doing it you it's not going to slow the game down in any way shape or form it's going to keep on going so j really just that very first time is it likely to slow the game down so it's up to you whether or not you want to do it it, it does require a, a pretty decent uh, placement before it becomes viable and and makes any kind of sense whatsoever to do it. Um, on the six and eight, it never makes sense. We cover that in one of the other videos. But on the five and nine, there's a point where it makes sense. It's just up to you if you want to stop the game for long enough to explain it and everyone staring at you on the floor trying to discuss it with the dealers and the dealers going back and forth. If you're at a, 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 a tier three, tier four casino, most likely the dealer will not have a problem with it other than having to stop and think for a second because again we don't see this we just we flat don't see this i can't think of any other bet that i see less often than a buy bet on the five and nine so hope you guys find this interesting and we will catch you guys next time thanks for watching please hit the like and subscribe buttons bye now